it's a very challenging disease and uh, for those that are afflicted with with the condition suffer it's I would have to say and I see uh, quite a number of rare neuroimmunological disorders and uh, my specialty as I had mentioned is within neuroimmunology with a focus on central nervous system disorders and I would say this this group of patients is probably one of the most challenging group of patients to treat because the disability that comes with it is extraordinary. And it's not only the physical disability, um, many patients, if not all, have a lot of anxiety that is intrinsic to the disease. Uh, and that anxiety actually feeds on the physical ailments that people can have. And so, you know, the common stressor that you or I may have that we cope with and we deal with could send someone into a crisis or an exacerbation with their stiff person syndrome. When we look at someone who presents with stiff person syndrome, when we make the diagnosis, uh, we start looking for cancers. Uh, because about 5%, maybe a little bit less, of patients with stiff person syndrome will have some malignancy associated with their condition. And so the cancer is actually causing the disease where it's uh, somehow getting the immune system revved up, causing these antibodies to be produced, which translates into the symptoms and the disabilities under the umbrella of perineoplastic syndrome. And there's a variety of perineoplastic syndromes out there um, that are more common than stiff person syndrome but nonetheless, it's something to be aware of uh, because when I see someone with stiff person syndrome, um, I'm looking for a cancer, breast cancer, ovarian cancer. Uh, you know, we've uh, rarely seen lymphoma associated with it as well. And the reason being is if you find a cancer, you treat the cancer, that could actually be curative for the stiff person syndrome. And I, I actually saw someone today, in fact, in clinic um, new to me, uh, was sent for a question of stiff person syndrome. And long story short, she's, she gives a very good, almost textbook, classic history for stiff person syndrome. She's got some of the clinical hallmarks um, that we see. She's got myelopathy, she's got spasticity, she has hyperlordosis, she's got unsteady gait. She's very rigid in the torso. She's on both symptomatic and immunosuppressant or immunomodulating therapy and, and doing okay, she's never had a full malignancy workup. She's had mammograms because she's in that age bracket where breast cancer is more common, but she's never had PET CT scan to look for small you know, areas uh, or small tumors that could be hiding out. And so that's part of our workup is to look at that. Um, because again, even though it's rare, in a rare disease, if you find a cancer, treat it, it could be curative for that person.